Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and I've kind of gotten a bit of a tradition that as I buy Humble Bundles that I think are appropriate to you guys, I share the contents, give you an idea of what's inside in case you find that bundle worthwhile to you. In this particular case, it's a little bit tangential to game development. In my opinion, it's still appropriate enough to enough of you that I decided to do a video about it, and that is basically the Vegas Pro Discover Creative Freedom Bundle on the Humble Bundle website. Now, if you haven't used Humble Bundle yet, I probably am a bit of a jerk for introducing to you. Um, uh, because basically this is the new Steam. In Steam, I go about buying a whole bunch of software that I'm never going to use until I eventually bought all the software on Steam. Well, now I'm doing the same thing in Humble Bundle. And Humble Bundles are basically packages of software, books, whatever, put together, and the proceeds go towards charity. And this particular one is, or partial of the proceeds go to charity, and you can actually direct how that goes about. This particular bundle is based around Vegas Pro. Now, Vegas Pro used to be a Sony product, but now it is made by uh, Magix, a company out of Germany, who also bought a couple of other products, uh, namely they bought the company Zara, which is a big part of this bundle as well. So what do you get in this actual bundle? Well, here is the website. I will link that in a comment down below. Um, but in the next eight days from uh, April the 17th of 2018, um, you get if you pay the lowest price, Music Maker uh, 80s Edition, which is kind of funny because I'm not sure it's useful without the full Music Maker, uh, Photo Manager Deluxe, and Sound Pool Blockbuster. Those are absolutely useless pretty much for most of us. Um, and then if you pay the average of $19, you get uh, Zara Photographic Designer, uh, Photo Story Deluxe, and Music Maker Hip Hop. Again, we're still in the borderline useless buying this bundle stage. But if you pay $1 more, then all of a sudden it becomes a whole lot more useful. You get Vegas Pro Video Editing Suite. Uh, this is Vegas Pro 14 Edit. I'll explain exactly where the differences are in a second. You also get Vintage FX Suites, a set of um, audio filters, VST files. Uh, you get Web Designer Premium, which is kind of like uh, Front Page, which is kind of strange because there's no real products out there like Front Page anymore, unless you count the likes of uh, Wix, etc. The only one, Adobe was making one and they just killed it. So this might be one of the only options out there. And they get you a Video Sound Cleaning Lab. Now, this one may be of interest to some of you, Zero Web Designer Premium, but I haven't downloaded it. I'm not demonstrating it today. The crown jewel in this is, of course, Vegas Pro 14. Vegas Pro 14 is a nonlinear video editor. Uh, what that basically means is you could take your, your music, uh, your videos, your um, so if you're making a trailer for your game, etc., this is where Vegas Pro really shines. It is for composing together video sound, sound effects, um, overlays, etc., to make and render an end result. Basically, these YouTube videos I do go through through a nonlinear editor. In some ways, I tested the last video I just made was made using OBS Studio for sound capture and then uh, Vegas Pro for the editing. And it was a bit of a mixed bag. The editor is absolutely wonderful. The interface is a little sketch, uh, but the, um, the, the power here is pretty staggering. This is basically probably a step down from Adobe Premiere and a step up from Camtasia in terms of power and capability. And in the open source space, there's things like Blender, but yeah, the downside of Blender as a nonlinear video editor is every time you use it, it crashes. And that's probably a pretty big downside. So this is one of those areas where the open source world hasn't done an exceptional job of providing an alternative. But you're generally not going to want to go out there and spend three, four, five hundred bucks on a nonlinear editor or even more for Premiere. So that actually makes this $20 purchase an incredible value. Now, you can buy Vegas Pro 14 Edit for about 200 to 250 bucks, and on sale on Steam, maybe down to 150, 200 bucks tops, but still $20 is a great deal. Now, you'll notice that there's a 15 version out there, but it's, it's not staggeringly more capable. I think it's got some uh, GPU acceleration, a couple other features, but nothing to break the bank about. And the difference between the Pro Edit and the Full Pro is also, it's a bunch of external plugins and add-ons, etc. So you've got the full editing suite for 99% of what people would need for a nonlinear editing. Now to actually show you what exactly this is on about, I'll give you a very, very quick demo. Um, you bring in your media assets, so come on over here, you can pick a file and then we'll do an import. I'll bring in a file that I recorded earlier. This is the last video I just did. Uh, this is the produced version of it, but that'll work. You drop it into your timeline like so. Uh, yep, I want it to be the same size. And then you'll see here you've got your video track and your audio track. Now you can actually do a whole lot with any of it. Uh, and you can split these tracks up into various different pieces. Now, one of the things to know any nonlinear editing software is going to be daunting. But I have had prior experience with, uh, let's see, Fireworks, uh, Premiere, uh, 
Camtasia, uh, Blender, and Nonlinear Editor, etc. And if you've had experience with any particular one of those, it transfers over pretty easily here. This is an easy application to learn once you learn nonlinear editing, which is a hard task to do. Uh, so basically, you compose your audio and your sound together. You can also split things up, which is very powerful. You basically start making cuts in your video, and you do that via these guys right here. So I select my like my guys, I can split. So if I want to do a split again, right here and here, I can do another split, like so. And if I decided this whole chunk of audio and video I didn't want it, I just go ahead and get rid of it. So now we've just cut down from there to there. And then you notice as I overlapped, we got these two draw bars down. Those are for doing um, crossover effects. Uh, we can also right click and add whatever kind of effect we want. So a fade type, and we can switch you know, between the ins and outs, etc. cetera. Uh, now you'll notice we have our audio going on and our video down here. So our video, we can go ahead and right click and we can add a series of media effects to the video. Um, so you see here a whole lot, we could pixelate it. Here, I'll do that as an example. So let's do a pixelation filter on here and okay. It's gonna come up, give us a bunch of options. So we can pick the amount to pixelate. And you'll notice on the right hand side, it is immediately taking action. Um, so we can exit that out. You can start queuing up. You can chain up as many special effects as you want. So in addition to the media effects, we've also got video effects. Uh, oh, same stuff. All right, there's an area where the usability could definitely, oh, no, over here. Uh, so we can do neat things. We can, um, so this is your perspective over time. We can do uh, keyframed uh, panning, etc. I'll show you something along those lines in a second. At the same time, you've got the same kind of toolkit for audio. So we come down here for audio, and I can do audio effects on top. And here's where you could do things like get rid of noise, add an uh, equalizer, change the, the settings on it. I could put a reverb on it, etc. And we're again, as I'm changing things. So if let's say I went ahead, so noise gate, get rid of some of the noise in the background. You see it got added up there, and I could keep chaining things on. So if I wanted to add chorus effect on top, I've just chained those two things together. And you'll notice I can switch between the settings for either one. Noise gate basically gets rid of things out of a certain threshold from moving removing background noises, etc. A uh, chorus gives you a um, I am talking in a church kind of sound going on. Um, if we do those together. Anyways, uh, that is kind of how you chain your special effects, your sound effects together, you cut your music down. And then we can do some pretty advanced stuff. And the cool thing is there is a lot of um, tutorials, etc., on YouTube and elsewhere to get you started on this guy. But let's go in here and we're gonna insert another audio track here at the top. And it's just like working with layers in something like Photoshop. Um, it, oh, let's stop playing. Go away. Uh, it's just like working in layers in Photoshop uh, where the topmost kind of applies to things underneath it, etc. So I just created a new video effects here and I'll show you how you could go ahead and create a simple uh, special effect for like doing a, a reveal, say. Let's go back to zero, zero. Uh, we will go in here, we're going to do a, I think it's media generation. I'll take text and title and create simple text and drag that into our world. We want that to start at the very beginning. Let's go with a wonderful name such as Game From Scratch. You see it's being drawn and updated here in real time. I'm actually gonna make that a bit smaller. Oops. Like that, and then we'll scale it up this way so we don't get any weird artifacts going on. And what I wanna do is change that font to something a little bit more funky. One of my favorites is Death Star, which is basically a Star Wars font. Uh, go ahead, pick that. There we go. So there is our font being generated. Very simple, very easy. Uh, we can do other things. We can we can do shadowing on it. We can outline it, etc. Uh, we got some advanced settings for the fonts. Uh, it, it's pretty capable in how it works. But now that we've got that there, let's actually do some special effects work here. So we've got it going. I'm gonna slick over here and select uh, mask or compositing mode right here. And I'm gonna make it a multiply mask. So now what you're seeing is we can only actually see um, through it, so it's masking out what's visible. So all you see is game from scratch and the underlying image is hidden. So now let's go down here. I think it's this guy. Oh, no, that's the wrong one. Yeah, here we go. So what I'm going to do, this is your perspective as you see it. So you're seeing a um, shot of the entire thing. Now what I'm going to do is set a couple of keyframes. So keyframe at this point, and this is just basically setting a normal keyframe. We'll scrub forward to the two and a half seconds. ish and we'll just scale that in like that 
and then set a keyframe. And then we'll do the same thing in about five seconds. Scale it in all the way and set a keyframe. And done. And now you go ahead and play with your masking special effect on top. And there you go. You got a cool reveal to the underlying image or movie that's playing behind, etc. And I'm, I'm only showing you the most basic stuff. Number one, because I am new to this guy. I picked it up, you know, last night. Uh, so I've just been playing around, but it's amazed me with how much I've been able to do. The functionality for adding special effects and doing this kind of stuff is leagues beyond what Camtasia includes. Uh, but for the most part, I actually don't need a lot of this. And here's the downside is the actual rendering out to uh, your production environment is slow. Um, and one of the things that stripped down when I said earlier, there's no major difference between the edit version and the full version. Well, one of the differences, you can't author Blu-rays directly inside this, but I don't, I don't view that as a huge um, world-changing event. Um, but when you're ready to export it, you can export it to pretty much every single file format you ever want. Um, you can share it out or you can do a render as, and when we do render as, uh, you've got all these different uh, formats to pick, and then when each format, a lot of times you've got predefined things. So if I wanna create 4K video for the internet, I just go ahead and click that one, click render, and then I come back in three hours and it might be done. So in essence, that is Vegas Pro. If you need a non-linear editor, it is for 20 bucks the best deal you're gonna get right now, period. So if you are looking for a video editor, the Humble Bundle should already have been sold. You should just hang up now, go buy it. It is the right purchase for you. It is quite easily worth the 20 bucks. And if you think you might need one in the future, again, buy it now, don't regret it later. Even the base level stuff on Steam, like your movie producers, etc., cetera, the, the limited versions of this kind of stuff, the easier stuff, the step up from Microsoft Movie Maker, but not far up, that stuff costs you 100 bucks. So this is an easy buy for 20 bucks. Now the next things we get into are a little bit more arbitrary. And first off, I am incompetent when it comes to audio stuff. So um, I'm gonna bumble over this. I'm gonna basically just drag things onto the screen and you can decide if you saw something interesting or not. I honestly am just terrible at, moves, at music production. But this is the guy, it came with uh, the rap um, stuff, the 80s stuff and the music sound blockbuster stuff. And you're basically, it's nonlinear editing for audio. This is kind of like how all audio editing programs that I've touched upon work uh, from, you know, um, what the hell's the Apple and Garage, Garage Band, something like that, uh, on up. Uh, they all seem to work basically on this same level. You create a bunch of channels of audio and you produce your song. Uh, so let's say for example, I want to put a layer of um, drum beats I pick a uh, drum that matches up and I drop it in here. And then however I want it to be, I create it out. And now we can play that out. And there is the end result. And in many ways, you just kind of keep doing this. So let's say I needed a guitar in here. Let's drag that guitar in. So now I have a drum beat and guitar going. And you basically start making your audio track this way. And behind the scenes, there is so much more going on. So we can actually sit here, come down here, and we can, oops. Uh, we can do it keyboard style. Uh, we can change out the default uh, instrument. At least I thought we could, yep. So we could go to uh, different style. Uh, go to instrument editor, let's click that, see where it brings us. So then you've got your different piano settings. Uh, it just kind of keeps going and going. But again, I am kind of incompetent on this stuff. We come down here, we have our various different instrument options, uh, including um, a uh, Vita pop drum kit that we've got our own control on. Um, so we could, actually it's recording this now, I think, as I go. Uh, so you can record that way into that particular channel. Um, you can add more. So a lot of these things are hooked up into their store. It can be brought in on the fly. So if you needed a concert guitar um, sound channel, you can bring it in for 30 bucks, etc. That is all hooked up through their store. Their store also has um, straight out, um, so sound pools. You got a free sound pool with this guy as well. Uh, so head on back over here, go to the sound pool. So uh, this came from there. Uh, what can I pick from it? Yeah, so if I wanted to do Agent Flute. Yeah, yeah. 
And together we go. And I have created horrible, horrible music. I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm not going to pretend to know what I'm doing, but this is pretty typical of how music editing apps work. You have VST support in here. You have the ability to hook into their store to add more. Um, and then when I, when I started getting into, well, anything else uh, that I actually own. So if I go back here and I brought this guy in, uh, Again, I, I have no idea what this beat program is doing, what this tone generator is doing. I don't know what any of these settings are doing. I don't know how to work with any of this stuff. So at this point in time, I think I will probably move on. But if you were a music guy, hopefully you saw something that interested in you there. That's about the extent of what I can show you with that. But you do get a music production suite in there. So you got a video editor, a music editor, and lastly, of the things that are somewhat interesting, I think, is you have uh, Zara Photo and Graphic Designer. Now, Zara is a company that's been around forever. I think they were founded in like 1981 in the UK, and they've been making productivity stuff for ages. In, in North America, uh, Zara products were actually sold by Corel under license for a number of years, but now ultimately Magic owns it all. And what this is, is basically uh, Photoshop Lite ish somewhere in that area it's got some unique abilities it's got some things that are actually very cool to um game developers potentially for texture creation etc um but it is a pretty straightforward uh painting app now what's cool is they've integrated it again quite nicely into their store and you get access to a whole lot of neat things so you can actually say for example go from stock um stock footage and you get access to all this stuff for uh, close to a year, I think it is, with this purchase. Um, so we can do here. So if I need to make a new thing, I can actually make it from the content library. So if you're using stock footage for uh, someone on the phone. So we can come up here and search for phone. Um, and this is all uh, royalty free, so you can use it in your own project. So if you needed to do presentation or whatever, some marketing materials, go ahead and import it. You know, create a new version. You'll notice here before we leave, you've got full layering support, etc. going on. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. I want to do new. Hmm. All right, I did it wrong. But anyways, I did it as a layer over top of our existing stuff, but no biggie. Uh, simple markup, you can resize this way. Now, one of the things I found particularly cool with this guy is their um, magic support, their uh, magic lasso. So if you need to do uh, special selection, you can do it like very, very quick and easy. Um, oops, I did a sloppy job there, but all right, I'm doing a very bad job. But this will generally snap to the edge. It's doing a really bad job on this phone for some reason. Uh, but it, it's actually one of the best selection tools I've used yet, even though this particular case did a horrible, horrible job of it. Yeah, let me try that again. So say I wanted to just grab the button. There you go. So as you see, it, it's got a pretty good selection tool. You, you can tweak down with it. This is one of those things that I end up going into a program, free program like paint.net for and find the tool a little bit lacking. It's one of those areas where um, if you want though to get this functionality, the open source world has you very well covered for painting. Uh, there's Krita for editing. There's uh, GIMP and paint.net and dozens of others to be honest. But if you want it kind of all in one package, you need to do a photo touch up, et cetera, or most importantly, if you want access to their pretty extensive um, collection of you know clip art, thousand items or a million items of clip art in here, et cetera, you do get that as part of this package. And when I said earlier that there's some cool support here for uh, potentially texture generation, uh, let me just show you that. So here I'm gonna come in and I'm just gonna create Nothing apparent. Oh, because I got it masked. All right. Let's start from scratch. New. And we'll just create a shape like so. And I'll go over here to the fill gallery. And you see, you've actually got a number of um, things that could be used as seamless textures right off the hop. So if you are actually doing some texture work, this could be pretty sweet. So we're in the woods and stones category. We see here we've got fabrics. We can bring up all the different fabrics. So you do get access to all of this stuff. So if you are looking for texture sources, this actually is a pretty good place to be. So I grab pebbles here. I think I can just literally drag and drop it in. And then boom, there are pebbles in our world. Uh, we can modify or edit that guy picking the corners. So, uh, but it, it, if you do need seamless textures, this is potentially some value in this guy for you. Another neat thing that they've got going on 
is you can actually do animations in this, which is a little shocking. So here it is, a particular frame of animation. Um, I, I don't even know what to here. I'll do a paintbrush, come over here, and um, we'll use, so again, here you've got all your different, uh, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, and like geometric brushes, uh, vector brushes. So it's got vector art abilities. So I could come in here and say hair, and draw with hair. And I can do. Okay, why are you not bigger than that? Hair. I should be able to do it much bigger than this, but I don't think that's what I want. No, it's not. Uh, but these are all vector shapes, so you can actually edit them after the fact. Uh, but you can draw with the particular um, things you saw down here. So here is my first frame, and I could just create a new frame of animation. Or actually, I should have done a copy frame. So I'll go back to my first frame, copy it. Let's get rid of frames. So frame one frame four, and at this point we could do something. I don't really know what to do. Um, like so, and then your animation is not the world's most exciting animation, but if you are doing sprite-based, frame-based animation, um, you do actually have some abilities in this application. Now, I'm not sure you would actually want to use this one for it, but if you have nothing else, it is certainly an option. The biggest thing I've found for use in here, honestly, is the access to their huge gallery of stuff, clip art, um, stock image works, uh, textures, that kind of stuff. I do see value there, but that is time limited. But again, part of a $20 package, it's hard to say no at that level. And basically, that is the current Humble Bundle. There is, as you see in front of you, eight days left to get it, if that's the thing for you. Um, I can't, again, speak towards the music app, because, as I said, I'm incompetent. But I can tell you from my video editing experience that Vegas is definitely worth 20 bucks. So if you need a nonlinear video editor, just buy it. Uh, hands down, just buy it. I, and I don't know that I would buy it for the other things. Um, you know, the music stuff, again, out of my reach. Uh, web designer is going to be very, very niche, but it's the same kind of concept. It's, it's basically, um, it also gives you access to all of their web stuff. And it really is between uh, 50 and 100 bucks. So that's one of the things that's actually kind of nice here is what they're advertising here, all the prices that they're saying on these things. That's actually the pricing. So if you wanted to buy this guy on Amazon, it's 30 to 60 bucks. Uh, if you want to buy um, Vegas on it, it's like I said, 299, I think right now. So the prices do actually match what they're saying. So the value in this is literally exactly what they say. All right, that's it for now. Uh, so that is the Humble Bundle. Um, again, like I said, a little tangential to game development, but um, every time I pick up a bundle, I do intend to actually cover what's inside of it so you guys can decide if it's useful or not. But do let me know down below if you do want me to continue to do coverage. If you'd like to see me focus on certain things, obviously when you get a huge bundle like this, I got this bundle for Vegas. Um, so the other stuff that's in there, I'm not hugely competent in or looking for particularly. So I do try to demonstrate it, but I do an idiotic job of it. Let me know how you'd like me to handle that in the future. Go Going forward and if you do find this kind of video uh, useful in general and of course if you're watching this nine days in the future I know this video is absolutely useless because this kind of stuff has an expiration date and coincidentally while we are on the topic of humble bundles another one you should actually check out potentially is this one right here uh, it's only on for uh, six more days but there is a huge collection of books from MIT about game design right now um, I didn't buy it so I guess that's a bit of a testimony. I didn't find anything here that I found particularly interesting. But then again, I find most books or sources on uh, design, um, uh, yeah, not not really my thing. So if you are looking to get into game design, uh, this is probably the cheapest way you're going to get your hands on, um, you know, 15 or 20 or so books for 15 bucks. So that's another interesting humble bundle, but I didn't actually pick that one up, so I'm not going to be covering it. All right, that's it for now. hope you guys found that useful. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.